That's dope. Ooh. All right, so we're already going. So thank you so okay. much, dude, for, for, for coming on the Black Box Podcast. I think this is episode yeah. six or seven. I don't even know. That's fine. Thank y'all for having me. We'll figure yeah. that shit out later. So, <laughs> yeah. so, what, so because we're dealing with two separate markets here, right? We're dealing with the Street Fighter market and the Smash market. I do mm-hmm. want to kind of bridge them a little bit. So, Ark, what is any exposure that you've had to Third Strike? What has it been? Um... I mean, I love Third Strike, first and foremost. I think Third Strike is one of the coolest games I've played, and I think it's, like, right under Melee for me, at least. It's oh, winning hearts every, already. Oh, my God. Every time I go to, like, I've gone to a place in San Antonio and played with my buddy Zaya a lot in the uh, Otaku Cafe. We play at the Third Strike Cap there when I used to travel there for tournaments, and for Melee, not that. But, um, yeah, I played a lot with him, and I played a lot in, in uh, Dallas as well with a buddy of mine, Sonny, who's a Ken player there. So it's I've enjoyed the crap out of the game. It's a lot of fun. It's yeah. really a lot of fun. That's dope. Do you, do you keep up with Co-op Cup or anything like that, like the like the big tournaments throughout the year? Or, um, I've or, been watching a lot of stuff recently, but I haven't really kept up with the scene too, too much. I got to see a lot of your matches actually and i've been like every, every time it gets like uploaded on youtube i'll like watch different matches and stuff like that, that it has <laughs> on my phone and stuff so that's dope yeah so how'd you get started in smash i gotta say oh my, my fault go, go go ahead matt i gotta say aside from call cup the greatest grand finals i ever saw was at evo between uh hungry box mm-hmm. and i think armada I mean, it was like a soccer match. There yeah. were like Zellas in the crowd. It was, it was ridiculous. Smash community I, gets a little mean, crazy. It was awesome. I, I, I wish yeah. every tournament could be like that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, they're all great. They're all yeah. really, really good. Uh, Smash has got a great history, and we took a lot of that from Street Fighter, too. The five, the concept of the five gods came from mm. uh, Street Fighter. Right. So mm-hmm. That's dope. How how'd you get started in the Smash community, like, or just playing Smash competitively? Start from the beginning. So starting from the beginning, let's see. It was probably like, so I, I thought that I started the community in two thousand five, but I actually started in two thousand and four. I just had like a group of friends that I would play with, and I was the worst out of all of them. I was always the first one to lose in like free for alls and everything like that. It was just driving me insane. And so I wanted to find out how I could get better than them. And then I found a website called Smashboards. And then I just fell in love with the game, all the technical aspects of the game and everything else. And I just got absorbed into it completely. That's dope. It's funny because um, like the New York Dirt Strike scene, we had an influx of new players. And they've Mm -hmm. all migrated from Smash, all of them. Yes. Right. And so, really? yeah, it's okay. and well, I have a little idea about why that is. And it's because Street Fighter, like Street Fighter is for the most part, pretty rigid in terms of what you can do once you leave the ground. You know, mm-hmm. in, in most traditional Street Fighters, it's like you have a jump. Maybe you can do a special move and that's it. You're at right. the whims of your opponent. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. Third Strike is very unique in that sense, where you always have an action that you can go to once you leave the ground. You know, you have the air parries, right. you have air moves, and so you're not, you know, be held to the system's limitations in that way. So I think that the mm-hmm. Smash players really are attracted to that aspect of Third Strike. That's the only explanation that I can come up with, that we have, yeah. what, eight, 8 to 10? I don't know. We, there's, like, conservatively, there's 5 to 6 new players that all migrated from right. Smash, and I think mostly migrated from Melee. Like, I, like, it, okay. do you think that that's perhaps a reason why maybe you're attracted to the game in a little bit? So, I think there's a lot to be said with like the because you know how Melee there's like directional influence, the DI, and that kind of stuff. Are y'all familiar with that concept? Very, yeah. very minimally, yeah. but yes. Very minimally. Yeah. So basically, you can you can act while being comboed. Right, like mm. you can choose different DIs to get out of certain combos, and that's why the combo game is so dynamic. Oh, okay, I know I about that. Third yeah. Strike, yeah, and yeah. I think Third Strike has a lot of that too. But it's especially like how you were talking about with the air, right? You still have access to all these defensive options, even though you're choosing something that is normally seen as kind of an aggressive option, jumping forward, right? Mm-hmm. 
but you still have access to being defensive. So there's a lot of different counterplay and stuff like that. There was a, I can't remember who I saw that was doing it, but somebody that was like anti-ring with jabs and mm-hmm. the guy tried parrying them and yeah. he would like do a few jabs into like a shory or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and those and, and having, you know, the access to, to, to these different options on offense and defense all the time, what, what it does really is it just provides almost an infinite amount of situations and interactions that you just don't get in other games too. You know, like, There's so much flavor. Mm-hmm. The game has so much flavor. Like, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and retro prettiness, right? Like there's something to that. Right? There's just oh, something to it, dude. The game is so beautiful. <laughs> oh. You stopped on a frame. You stopped on a frame in one of the uh, the videos that you did with um, the breakdown videos. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, this is this truly is such a beautiful game. Yeah, no, it, it catches my eye too. Like when I'm going, <laughs> pull it together. <laughs> Yo, you know, when, when I'm editing so those funny. videos, that's the only place that I can really appreciate, like, the art of the game. You know, when you're kind of mm-hmm. going frame by frame and you're trying to, like, see what the hell's happening. Like, right. like that's when, like, the beauty of the game kind of, like, shines through. Like, who the hell thought to add an animation for this one particular moment of of pain, like, after getting, like, decked with a stand fierce by Ryu? Like, there's just, every <laughs> character has that one special frame that is, like, mm-hmm. ugh, like, it's just beautiful. It feels so good landing certain hits and seeing your opponent just writhe in pain. <laughs> it's just like, especially like, uh, I started with Makoto and like landing Seichison oh, always yeah, yeah. feels so good. Oh, it's... especially after Hayate. Like, oh. <laughs> and her voice actor so is so good. It adds to it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You feel everything. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah, for sure. Like the whole. The whole aesthetic, the whole feel of the game, the music, everything about the game is just great. I like it a lot. Yeah. There's something about, like, just the genius, but, like, behind, I think, the art direction in general, just, like, where the screen shakes after certain moves make impact and stuff like that. It just makes you really, like, feel. And there's some, there's one person, I forgot, I feel like a dickhead for forgetting his his channel, but he he did, (laughs) like, he does animation breakdowns of of mm, games okay. and he g- recently came out with the third strike one talking about like why reuse donkey kick is so satisfying to land mm. and it was just it was just so beautifully like broken down maybe i might like have like put footage of it over here but it's just That's like awesome. it's just a testament to i guess like the way that art was directed back in the 90s i think you know when sprite animation was still the like the go-to you know, it's just sad now. We're looking at like computerized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ken in Street Fighter Five, banana hair, the French fry hair, French fry hair. Yeah, dude. So, uh, so there. Um, I understand that you were a competitor, right? For for, for Smash for a very, like, a, an enough time that you became a top player in the game, and, mm-hmm. but there was a transition to coaching. So, uh, not necessarily, I still, I still like to compete or I still want to try and compete, Mm -hmm. but COVID's kind of got everything crazy. My, um, the last year was actually one of my better years, but, um, they took me off of the top 100 ranking due to inactivity. Oh, I see. So, yeah, I couldn't travel as much. I didn't make as much money, so I wasn't able to go to as many tournaments, but I was on top 100 for three years in a row. And and yeah. and and the and the smash boards are <laughs> is that the governing body, like of that of that top one hundred list or who is it? Um, the the top one hundred list is done by Melee and Omni or Myom, okay. usually. And then there's others that have started taking over. I think like uh, I can't remember exactly who it was. Liquid maybe mm. or uh, Red Bull. I can't remember exactly, but I think. They do a, a list of their own now as well. Damn, and uh, you know, like that, I I really do think that that organization, like you know, the the organization aspect of of melee is what really drives the like the viewership right. forward. Mm-hmm. You know, it just it just allows like viewers to kind of keep track with these things. I really do put a lot of merit into rankings and stuff like that, just because you know I watch sports and. 
you know, you mm-hmm. just see, you know, narratives just, you know, pop up out of the ground, you know, when, you know, when things like rankings or conversations like that just come in and it just mm-hmm. gets everybody up like out of their seat, you know, like players want to prove the rankings wrong. Other players want to prove the rankings right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just it <laughs> fires everybody up. It, it, yeah. It's just interesting the way that I feel that the, the, the Street Fighter community and probably like the larger fighting game community in general, ha- it's it's there is almost an allergy to that kind of to that kind of organization like coaching Mm. coaching is the only is the real c word in the in the fighting game community like it's just strange (laughs) it's so strange like there's so much like controversy around you know coaching or the or the notion of coaching and it's strange to me like i i i always but i it's to me it seems like it's something that's more it's not only accepted, but it's an actual like prominent thing in in the Smash community. Like, like could you speak right. to that process? Like, how does like even if if even somebody like me, right, who's been playing Third Strike for for over a decade now, and I I think I would I have the credentials to be a coach, right? Like mm-hmm. to be that. If I were to say that, I think I would, like people would just roll their eyes. You know what I mean? I right. I, I just get that yeah. feeling of it. Like that's just the culture in the in the fighting game community that people just roll their eyes at at that so i just i want to know what is it do you think about the melee community that maybe that ingratiates that kind of dynamic that it's okay to call somebody your coach because they're just good at the game you know right right um getting your ass beat i think is like the thing in, <laughs> in melee that causes people to want to get into coaching so much they like I don't know. They just get spanked for hours and hours and hours sometimes. And they're like, what am I doing wrong? Like what, you know, what can I improve on? And the game is like so dynamic and it's so hard to keep track of. There's so much movement and like a lot of different, you know, um, avenues for movement and different types of attacks and variations of attacks. And it's, it's hard to navigate. It can be really, really difficult to navigate. So, um, that's why you, Go ahead. You can't be so blasé about that uh, that top one hundred. You gotta say it like top one hundred. <laughs> yeah. Top one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> it. Don't the mark. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no joke. It's no joke. I haven't been top twenty anything since like eighty seven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. No, dude. Like, no, it's true. Top twenty in my heart. How about that? Top twenty in my heart. I got you. I barely know y'all, but I already love y'all. No, so. Al- dude. Matt. Matt's crazy. He's definitely the best Alex player in America right now. So I don't know why he's even. He's oh, okay. he's playing coy. He's being very coy right now. That, I see. That's a shtick. But it's no. But yeah, you no. But you should feel proud about you know or say it with your chest. You know the top one hundred thing. And I don't because dude, dude, because yeah. dude, because melee rolls out of bed and gets like a thousand plus players at at you know at your highest tournament you know like like that's a low number right. like street fighter mm-hmm. wishes it can get that many you know just rolling out of bed you know so top 100 is nothing to sneeze at you right. know that's that's but it's just strange sure. it's strange like we, we don't keep track of those things in that same way and i think it hurts it hurts the viewership of it you know it hurts the it it, it hurts the competitive aspect of it i i actually yeah, I don't really like the top 100 aspect just because mm. there are so many different underdogs that we just don't really know about. And mm. I mean, it's so hard. People just like myself, right? Like people who can't really travel that much, mm-hmm. but they, you know, still know the game really damn well and they're really good players, but they just don't have that chance, right? So is it the, they just don't have the chance to go out there and do that? So is it is is it the the concept of a top one hundred or is it the way that uh, like those who create the list come to the conclusion? It um it's not how they come to the conclusion. Like I'm fine with that. It is a little uh I I, I feel like it might be or at least it was a little bit biased at, mm. at a time, but I think it's fine with how they come up with it and everything else, or how they have come up with it. How how, um, how do you think it was biased before? Like in well, what ways? again, kind of bias for like, hmm, let's see. There were certain players who were very good, and just because they didn't get enough exposure, or because one player did really well at like one tournament, they got ranked higher than other players. And I mean, that's just going to happen with a ranking, right? Mm-hmm. 
but mm. but the, the major thing that I dislike about the ranking is because of the pride of the ego that comes with it. Mm. When you have that, when you have that title, you start. I mean, like I've experienced it. A bunch of people have experienced it. You you feel pride in it, but there is such a thing as too much pride, you know. And you start going into like ego territory. And when you start having ego territory, that I mean, nothing kills a top player quicker than ego from what I've seen at least. So like it, 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 smashed, it gets, right? So. No, I mean I think that that's true. You know, um, I think with many you know like competitive things, right? Like if you're if you're so egotistical that you can't self reflect, you know, on things on your shortcomings, then somebody's already you know like nipping at your heels and they're gonna get you out of there. You know, like the next right. tournament. Uh, but in terms of its viewership or the competitive, you know, maybe not from the competitor standpoint, but from the people who are watching, like, do you think that that top 100 standing or list plays into their enjoyment of, of it? Or oh, do you absolutely. think, oh, it does? I think so. I, I definitely think so. Because a lot of the people love checking out stuff like that, right? Mm. Just like the average players. Or I say average, but I mean, like, most of the people keep keep up the date on the top 100 maybe not the people that are lower on the list usually like mm. kind of where i was right I think people don't really pay t too much attention kind of like at the lower end but um after a while people start paying attention to pretty much most of the players that are on that list and they give them a lot of respect and they love watching them play and cheering for those kind of players because mm. so, you get to follow them you get to follow you know you get to follow along like your favorite players yeah. and their number and everything else there's a whole lot of like um there's like intimacy and in having like a mm. favorite kind of player. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so. like being attached to that. You know what it is? I, I do think that the like ranking list like that, what it does mm. is it provides, uh, it, it's like a super highway to like, to uh, an understanding about who should win and who shouldn't win. You know, it's right. like, it's like, right. so without needing to have all of the knowledge that these top players have, you can still, formulate you know an opinion that's kind of based on at least something concrete and so right. it, it, it kind of i'm not going to say it's like fake but it gives you a feigned sense of what of what should happen in a match and so mm -hmm. at least you can get those moments of of underdog you know i guess underdog right. isms and stuff like that right like those moments like they're easier mm -hmm. to communicate because yeah, and it's probably easier for the commentators too right like if you get a, a right, guy yeah. who's ra ranked outside of the top 100 or he's like right there on the fringe and mm -hmm. he's you know he's about to be you know the you know 10th ranked guy it just gives them an easier like narrative right. to kind of go along while they're commentating too so it, it is pretty beneficial i don't know to, to bring up an interesting point, there was a player, there was an unranked player, this is actually a Texas player, and this is pretty funny that I'm saying this um, <laughs> on here, but there was an unranked Texas player that beat the best player in the world in a set. And, yeah, may, lol, melee. <laughs> so, sometimes, that was it. melee's a hard game, y'all. <laughs> melee's so hard. When you say set, can you break down the parameters when you say set? What mm -hmm. do you mean, like? So it was a it was a three out of five. So like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. it was, it, yeah. And and there was some argument and misunderstanding because it was supposed to be a two out of three. But it, it, here's the 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 fucky part. Can I curse on here? Of Hopefully course, yeah, oh. yeah. All of right. course, all right. It's me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we in there. Oh. <laughs> So, oh wait, hold on. Oh no, my ADHD is attacking me. Oh, dude, um, take your time. I I I got an edit button, so take okay. your time. Perfect. Um, right. So the the crazy thing about that was, um, the player's tag is Albert. That's also his name. He's the player from Texas who beat Hungry Box mm. in a tournament uh, set three out of five. And the cool thing was, he actually beat him even if it was a two out of three he was up two one mm. and then they went in after that so yeah it was it was pretty insane it was it's pretty insane to have happen and i had a really good run that tournament too and uh no one paid attention <laughs> to it because albert beat Hungry Box. <laughs> one, <up it. laughs> oh hey well that's hey good for you Ark. look at you man <laughs> doing so good on your own you know that's the worst all right it happens. Yeah. I love Albert. Albert's a great guy. So he deserves it for sure. And he's like 
top 30 on there now, I think. Damn. So, top 30 on top 100. Like 30s, or maybe not top 30, but like 36, somewhere around there, I think. That's quite a jump. That's quite a leap there. <laughs> yeah, and he's kind of like who I was talking about. You know, those kind of players that mm. are like underdogs in their own area that people don't really know about. So Yeah, but those are fun he too, right? Like the... Yeah. <laughs> He became an overnight celebrity after that, or kind of just. I mean, no, not, not quite, not quite. But he he definitely got a lot of attention Relax. after that set, for sure. He started slinging his cock the next uh, tournament. <laughs> Man, he was doing that shit before anyway. The first tournament I met that dude. Oh, that, just, that's the worst. You can threw it out on the table. He's like not he's not quite the type of underdog that you don't mind winning. You know what I mean? He's like right. the other kind. You're like <laughs> like fuck. Oh my god. Yeah. It's Oh my god. We yeah. we we all got those too, you know. We all got those those people <laughs> in the community where you just want to like keep them under the thumb, you know. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Oh. No. <laughs> how does how does because I don't know how you know because I have no sense of parallax coming from the Street Fighter community and we you know again you know the c word you know we don't use it like how does how does that look in in melee like what does that look like how does one cultivate that that um, I don't want to call it a business but I would say right. just the practice right like how would how does one so, cultivate that so I hmm let's see. I'm always a student of the game, first and foremost. Mm. Even recently, I've, I've seeked out coaching from other top players. Mm. And I had a friend, or I have a friend who's also considered one of the best players to ever do it. And he coached me a lot and he helped me out. And, you know, he and I, through our friendship and talking about Melee and everything like that, we would share ideas and stuff. And he would help me out more with the like neutral side of everything. Mm. So, and he helped me with that and helped me understand that a little bit better. And I went my own way with it and in how I try to teach and explain that to everyone else. But for Smash, you kind of have to, um, you know, there's no kind way of saying it, but you kind of have to be somebody to be mm -hmm. a coach, I, I feel like. For sure. So um, you either have to, you know, have connections or you have to, you know, like be a very, very good player. Like the number one person for coaching and lessons right now is Drug Fox, mm. for sure. And he's just like, mm. he's booked for forever, I think. So so is that how it works? Like you, like you, you, one gets booked for an event, let's just say, is that is that probably more like apropos or is it that you get booked for a certain amount of time? And so his are like, I, he does it through Patreon, I believe. Mm. And it's like through monthly subscriptions and stuff like that. And doing different subscriptions will get you different, um, different things, right? But, like, uh, I believe he does hour-long sessions. I do hour sessions as well. Mm. So, and mine are just $15 for the hour. It's relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. I want to try, I've wanted to try and provide, um, you know, good coaching to where it wouldn't, you know, break somebody's wallet, mm -hmm. essentially. They're like, well, that's like two tournaments, right? Yeah. Like, if I don't enter two tournaments, then I can just get coaching. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. something like that so it's something that's fluid right like it's not something that kind of uh like one doesn't just resign themselves to being a coach right like you just right like you do both right. like you wear both hats i i do for sure i definitely want to get back into competing but my internet is trash <laughs> trash have you so all right is is that is have you have you guys been able to get into that parsec stuff like the cloud playing and all that or the parsec stuff, the yeah. like, like because um, uh, something that's recently been like become a development for um for retro games is being able to like play like there is a like a cloud system that they do. I'm not entirely too sure, but I can send you a couple links to it. But they're sure, basically sure. like you're you're able to um simulate um on like offline play through like a cloud connection. Oh, are, uh, like rollback? Is that what it is? It's not no no it's not I forgot what yeah. it's called I'm I'm, I'm gonna right. find okay. it I'm a, and I'm gonna link it to you um, because okay. I know that it's like certain like retro like players like people who play Marvel two and CVS two like they've been able okay. to get like good you know practice like um, oh, okay. online so maybe that's like a different um, maybe that's an avenue that that you can take to get some practice 
because that's tragic, yeah. man. Yeah. This fuck it. This, I like, I know what you mean. Like this pandemic, like completely, like just sh- like zapped me of all of my like motivations to practice at all. So right. like, I completely feel you on that. I am, I'm kind of a strange one. I love practice. The most fun I've ever had in a game has actually been practicing on my own. Yeah, me too. That, like, dude, seriously, yeah, I'm right. the same way. Yeah. I'm the same way. But yeah, I, I do hear how like COVID and everything else is like sapped motivation for certain things. But I've been keeping my practice up and I feel stronger now than I have in a very long time. But I haven't really gotten to play very many people, unfortunately. So. <laughs> You yeah, won't know, right? Just, you won't know for sure. <laughs> and I won't know for sure, but I'm just going based off of my feeling, my gut feeling. So that's dope. I had a question. Do you track your students' progress? Um, so, um, I with the ones that do like uh, that come back for more and more coaching, I will keep tallies on them, right? And I will pay attention. But since COVID's hit, like my coaching has just gone downhill. Mm. People just can't can't afford it or don't want to or you know other other it's things difficult. have been going on. Right. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty difficult. So, but um, and even you know even other personal stuff has gotten in the way as well. Mm-hmm. But that's just life. Things happen. Yeah, ebbs and flows, right? <laughs> ebbs and flows. Ebbs and flows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can feel Ark's energy. I can tell when you're teaching. It's you're having fun at the same time. So, I love helping people. <laughs> like what? I love helping people. Yeah, so I, just, I was gonna ask about that. I was gonna ask like, what is it that drove you to coaching in the first place? Like, other than obviously, you know, whatever you know, monetary like reasons. But there, like, there has to be like you clearly love it, right? So, what is it about it yeah. that 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 you love? Like, wh- why do you think helping people helps you? Uh, I. I love it. It's very rewarding when the click happens, when that mm. light bulb goes on and somebody's like, oh, mm. I get it. Like that means a lot to me because when I was coming up, it was a very toxic scene that mm. I was in and no one wanted to help me or no one wanted to help anyone. They wanted to stay on top. Mm. Right. And it was so difficult. And I remember always feeling so lost after tournaments. It's just like, I prepared for this one person and then I lost to like two randoms and I would be so mad about it and like frustrated and I couldn't figure it out on my own and it took me so long and the only way for me to to get where I got today was and I'm not even exaggerating I locked myself in my <laughs> buddy's place and we played 9 hours a day for an entire summer and we analyzed matches and we brutally made fun of each other for every single mistake that the other person made like that's a crack session right there yeah yeah like we would uh he would get a hit on me in neutral and he'd, he'd quit out of the match and he'd be like all right we go like watch movies or like hang out or something but i'm sorry i just don't fucking play trash players anymore um, i'm really sorry about that but i know you drove like half an hour to get here but dude i, I just don't play shitty players like you i'm sorry <laughs> and uh that that drove me and that made me so angry and everyone would always put me down and i remember thinking i feel like there's a better way of doing this but i can't see it and so i had to do a lot of that on my own and i had to become a better player yeah. like that on my own and i don't want that for the new players i don't want that for them at all you know i there's healthy ways of improving in video games and mm-hmm. that's what i want to provide to people 100% I yeah. feel you on that because I don't I mean, I can't I can only speak for myself because Matt started a lot like not a lot before me, but he was part of the guard that was before, you know, my my generation okay. of third strike players was started in New York. And so I have a similar experience to you in that sense, in that, you know, what what I knew learning the game was, was going to a dark arcade, you know, on a Friday night and putting quarters down. And getting your ass beat quarter by quarter yep. with everybody yelling in your ear, you know that was my experience for it. And it yep. was, it, again, maybe that's maybe that's why I enjoy practicing by myself so much, because mm. that was really those moments, like those those, you know, it's clicking moments would happen mm. when I was by myself. And so yeah. it was like a bunch of practice while I was by myself, and then you have the one day to prove how much you improved week to week. You know, and it's like how much like do, do, will I have money to buy dumplings at the end of this? Was my goal. <laughs> that was the goal. Yeah. 
because I'm a maniac. I'm good. I'd rather not eat than not play, right? So it's like mm-hmm. at the end of the night, am I gonna be broke? Am I gonna eat some dumb? So I that get something to eat or no? Yeah, right. And so <laughs> it, it was, you know, <clears throat> that that kind of is what drove me to start, you know, making videos for you know like Thirst Strike because okay. and another another part of that, and I don't know if it's the same for you is. Uh, do you do you know about the about the Evo moment about Daigo's yeah. parry? Oh, oh, of course. So there oh, there was there was a moment right where you you know I I would go back to that right and you'd kind of watch it over and over and right. you know once every week or something like that something weird like that and it, it instilled the same wonder in me about the game and it, it but there was a moment where one week I went to it and the wonder just wasn't there anymore. And it was weird. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, because, like, the more time you spend with anything, like, the wonder just kind of fades away a little bit. And so right. what I did realize, though, is that, well, un- unfortunately, in the U.S., like, we don't have the kind of community that can, you know, we can improve each other in exactly the in the exact way that you, it would happen in Japan. Because, they're, because their scene is just much more you know like condensed you have these little pockets where you know you have 10 to 15 top players that could win you know co-op cup in any given year right and so you can get those moments of those eureka moments more often in those kinds of environments right so so once that i realized that that moment didn't bring the same goosebumps in me like that same wonder i was Mm -hmm. i I started looking for it in other places and I realized that the easiest fix was to get, to get other people to find those Eureka moments. And it was like, Oh shit. Like that's giving me the, that's giving me the sense of, it's like vicarious wonder. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, it's a strange way to look at it because it's kind of selfish, but it's, you know, in in a sense, like there is this idea at least that people don't have to learn in the in the hard way that i had to learn you know like exactly i don't know maybe matt has a different perspective because you came up like before me maybe you have like a less uh like (laughs) less sympathy (laughs) or like less empathy (laughs) (laughs) no actually you make a great point because it's something that's like beaten to your head that the only way to get good at something is to Mm. walk through the fire pit um Mm. Ark, I don't know if you're familiar with this player named Flash G, but he was Flash New York G. New York Street Fighter legend. And I would go okay. to the arcade. He would pick Dungeon Ryu on me, activate Dungeon, and then look away because he knew <laughs> it was so disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. So I I would walk into the arcade and people were calling me No Look Dungeon because they just knew <laughs> they just activate the fireball it was gonna hit. Me. Right. But, your point, Ark, I can tell you maybe give it like, I don't I, I don't get the feeling that you baby your students mm. if I'm wrong there, but you kind of make it fun. Mm-hmm. And then, so do you teach them everything? Because like, what if you run into them in a the tournament? Oh, uh, I mean, that's happened before. Uh, I've, run oh. students, I've run into students in, in bracket and that's fine. So the way that I that I like to say this is I will teach someone how to deal with the tools of the character that I play, but mm. I won't teach someone how to beat me, mm. right? But I can still help them on their path to learning how to better themselves for that character. And I can, even now with like the closer people, like most of my Texas people, I will tell them and communicate with them what I'm going for that I play and practice with often. And like this is separate from like the people that are outside of my own state right these are just Mm -hmm. the the people in my own community and i'll tell them what i'm doing so that they can learn how to beat it so that i get better Mm. by playing those players as well but that's more on like i don't know it depends like albert's one of the people that i would that i would tell and talk about stuff to and like the higher some of the higher end players around that level that are in the same state as me right because uh, you know because there, it, like, there is a sense of investment there, right? And and mm-hmm. you know, it, it like you can't invest the like the same capital into every, into every right. person. You know what I mean? So it makes sense that you would reserve those tips, those special tips that you know would improve you for the people who would actually help you improve, and not the people that would get you out of there in one bracket. You know, like luckily right. almost. You know, 
So that makes a lot of sense. I'm I'm taking notes. I don't know. I might I, I, I might try to bring this coaching business over to <laughs> over to the fighting yeah. games. Do it, absolutely. Motherfuckers um, need to know. They got to learn. <laughs> yeah, you gonna learn today. <laughs> Justin Walker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, but you can that little kid. Yeah, when he did it that little kid. Yeah. Oh no. But um. Our, for, or, our, like, I think go you. You the you give me my money back. My execution is so bad, and I know wave dashing is so important in melee. Mm-hmm. Like these are they're sausages. You know? like, <laughs> I, I can't. Oh. <laughs> you know, You're not bad at wave dashing. You just think you are. Oh, see that those are those oh, gems that he, yeah, <laughs> give him. <them, laughs> <laughs> give you sixteen fifty an hour for that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You see my confidence points? Just shoot up like 60 points. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true, though. Like, I actually had a, a student just recently who's also a, a friend of mine. Um, he came to me and he's like, my reactions are just so bad. And I, I remember watching um, Say Jam's uh, video about mm. reactions and everything like that that went into it. And so I said, okay, okay your reactions are bad. Okay, let's work, let's work with that real fast. Mm-hmm. And I set up a situation for them, and I said, this is what I'm going to do, and I want you to react to it. And he did it the very first – well, he did it the second time because I actually messed up the first time. Mm-hmm. But the second time we did it, and he got it perfectly. And I said, there you go. Your reactions don't suck. You're just being really hard on yourself. Mm. Yeah, and, right. Yeah, it's the judgments. It's the internal judgments that we have that make a lot of that stuff very difficult to do. When we separate judgment from it, then we're actually able to execute on the things that we want to do. Yeah. A lot easier than normal, at least. Jesus, the gems, the, the uncut gems the gem. being dropped. He left that session. He left that session. He called whoever he was dating. He was like, listen, you need to get over here right <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you can't you can't understate like the value of just another voice in the room, right? Because you will beat yourself into the ground if you're kind of like led to your own devices, you know? Right. <laughs> it's. I was gonna. Um, I wanted to ask about um, about kind of coaching in that in that way. Like, is is it? Do you think? Like, what's your approach to dealing with something? Because I. Th- because there are natural limitations to people right to their to their you know and it it, and they come through in like very like minute ways right like for for the most part everybody is going to be able to like learn most of what you can do in a fighting game right like it's not like like there isn't such a high you know level of of barrier but Mm -hmm. there are those like natural limitations that that come up what's your way of approaching that because i i think that people have a a weird understanding about for some for instance uh reaction time right Mm -hmm. a lot of people think that you're reacting from this void you know from from this dark void that there's no information and you're reacting to it like that's not what's happening a lot of times reaction is a lot of context like context really is what provides reaction and then it's also um it's not only context, but it's also, you know, repetition, like seeing that and then your eyes being able to relay that message to your hands like quickly because you've seen it, right. you know, a million times. So there's a lot that's going into reactions that isn't just pure, you know, uh, physiology. Right. So. Right. But but there are instances where a player might have limitations. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, not cognitively. That's not that's not the way to say it. But there are limitations to people's ability. And so, like, what is what would be your approach to that, to 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 dealing with those kind of? So those players are a little bit more limited, unfortunately. Yes, right. They, they can be. That's just that you know you just have to accept it for what it is. But um, you just kind of have to ask yourself, okay, well, and I kind of made this awesome realization a little while ago, and I made a uh, post about it on Twitter. But it's just like, oh wow, we're actually all like fighting game characters. We all have mm. our own like qualities and strengths and and weaknesses and you know. So what I would say for those players is find your strengths and then find a character that has qualities that are similar to those strengths mm. and then play off of that. But yeah, I mean that also kind of it depends on what kind of character that that player would want to play. So they probably have to find like a few characters that they really, really you know, uh, sunk with. Right. 
that they can have fun with, but still kind of aligns to their like to, to their strengths. Cause, right. Because like there's certain people that complain about third strike, and then I watch I watch them play, and it's like, dude, you're playing twelve. Like, what do you want? Like, what do you expect? Yeah. Like you're playing Sean, <laughs> right? And maybe that's like the hyperbolic, you know, example. But there are other examples, mm-hmm. right, where maybe somebody's playing with um maybe hugo or alex but their strengths might be better suited to makoto right it's the same kind of of, like the same kind of strategy but there 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 are things that she can do in terms of movement that can hide your limitations in the neutral game right Right. so it, it also takes a lot of flexibility on behalf of the student right to you know, be willing to acquiesce in that way, right? Because some people get it in their heads that they have to be the best fucking 12, whoever right. left. Right. And they're, I mean, that's fine. If, if the person wants to do that, they're going to have a lot of challenges, right? Mm. Because the limitations of the character that they pick, but that's fine. If that's how they want to identify themselves. And if that's how they want to express themselves through the game, I, I think there's nothing wrong with picking lower tier characters. Yeah. It yeah. just depends if, if you're, you know, are you willing to go through the struggle? Because, right. Yeah. I mean, that, that can be rough. Talk about getting your ass whooped. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, at, at, at that though. point, at that point, coaching becomes therapy. Yeah. It's right. Like, you got to like, <laughs> yeah, like, you got to lead them through this fire. Like, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, who was it? Just pick a top two. Just pick uh, a top two. Uh, Sanford <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Sanford <laughs> Kelly. Sanford Kelly. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, it, yeah, go it's ahead. funny your point. How the same lessons, you know, they apply in life. You know, mm. you yeah. find what you're good at. You hire what your strengths. And you know, we're about to become life coaches after this. Yeah, right. Oh. Damn, that would be fun. Damn, I art. would like that. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to be a life coach for people. That would be wonderful. Do you, um do you have any uh I guess like plans to either write some of this stuff down or or you know public you know like like publicize something or publish something I mean publish something or oh. or I don't know make content uh, you know that might be at least ground level you know hey come get into this game because it's fun type of thing. I mean I just. I have like a lot of ideas and thoughts on it, but I, as far as like right now, I don't really have anything because everything that I've learned, I feel kind of dirty trying to like make a book or something on it. And Mm. the reason why I feel dirty is because I've done so much research and I've had so many other people help me and Mm. I've just kind of picked and chosen and kind of come up with stuff on my own in certain areas that I've had to. And it feels like this Frankenstein kind of thing, right? And I feel like it's just a little piece of everything hey, that's in there. Man, let's so. a, listen. Do you think DJ Khaled sleeps well at night? Because that's what he does. He's the architect. <laughs> Yeah. And you could be that, like, like there, you know, like there is, like there is something to be proud of if you can take the good ideas from other people and, like, you know, kind of smash them together and create sure. create something that's palatable. So I hope that you know we can we can encourage you to go on ahead with that idea because that's fucking brilliant. Like, and, and own that because not everybody has that capability, you know, to see what's right. what's good about that or maybe what's what's easily translatable about this idea that you have. You know, it might right. it might come together with a bunch of other like like that good idea might be nestled inside like this like diarrhea, you know what I mean? But, but it take <laughs> it takes skill to be able to like pull that shit out, you know? Right. Make that book. Sure. I, I wanna see it. And oh, your man. Twitter is funny, man. Yeah. You have a really funny Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Y'all look oh. through my Twitter. Oh, no. I, We're professionals yeah, here, you know? We, we gotta do the it. research. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> some of the tweets some of my older tweets were fucking funny as shit like, <laughs> really funny like uh, trying to quit smoking but nicotine patches taste like shit <laughs> that one was really funny like I like I, and I got like no likes up that one I was like, God, what are these people yeah, dude the, the, yeah. the, the algorithms man they're just random like that yeah like, I'm giving them gold here. This is <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Google, can I uh, retweet my own tweet? Can I, can I do that shit? I, oh, no. I, I do have one thing. thing. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I wanted to run this one by Ark because 
One thing I noticed about SNK, they hold their characters out to everybody. So when you see Terry Bogard in <laughs> Smash, yeah, like you know, um, Geese is in Tekken. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they put uh, my man from Virtua Fighter in. Like they just hold their characters out. Like they have yeah. no, they don't care. So when you see like Solid Snake, I know it's not you know melee, but when you see like Solid right. Snake, Ryu, Ken, and Terry, like what does the Smash community feel about that? Like, I think that's sick. Anything where we can mm-hmm. like start blending the communities together mm-hmm. and start getting more people interested in all the games, yeah. I, I think that's just wonderful. I think that's so amazing. Mm-hmm. Right, like try and get everyone connected. Yeah, I do. I it's it's funny. Like it's not because you're here. It's because I I just love every kind of comp. I love. I'm in love with competition. I never Same. understood. I never understood this whole smashes in the fighting game thing. I never got. I like it's just something that always boggled me. Like I just don't understand that. Like I, <laughs> like, I don't know where. Yeah. I, I would if I was sma- if I was Smash I would be ashamed to be considered a fighting game like uh, a f- just like just because of <laughs> dude like Smash just walks in to Evo and takes over the event like run your shit like we we got this okay. it's like yeah. you know what I mean so it's like <laughs> like I just don't I don't <laughs> understand like on what basis does a game need to be a fighting game like I don't get it like there's two characters on the right. screen they're fucking adorable and they're fighting like that's that's yeah. all you need to know. Right, like, and not to mention all of this, like, like how the meta in melee is so rich. And I do want to talk to you about like brawl and and you know the you know and and four and all that stuff, um, and get your take on it, um, because I'm I'm having trouble kind of assimilating to newer fighting games myself. But um, okay. you know, I do think that like I just don't understand where that like mentality comes from and what. You know, and I, I know it, it's it, it's kind of shitty to put you as like this, you know, as like the as like the envoy of your community. But at least you have like some perspective, right? Like, what do you what no, do you guys I, think about that no, about that conversation about the whole fight, uh, smashes and fighting games? I, hmm, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't really like it, but I didn't. Hmm. I wasn't a fan of it, but I didn't hate the people who were saying it. I wanted to understand the perspective a little bit better mm. and understand why they were saying what they were saying. Yeah. Because um, I think, you know, and it was like, I have friends who say it and joke about it and stuff. And we, we like to say that uh, anytime somebody asks, you know, we're like, oh, so do you play fighting games? And I was like, well, actually, I, I play a children's party game. <laughs> 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 and they're like, "Wow, this dude's a fucking loot now." But, <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of a joke. It's like, oh, okay, pick a real fighting game. They're like, all right, well, Mario Kart. I don't understand yeah. what's a fighting game. Like, so yeah, I never, I never really understood it, but um, I kind of wouldn't have minded talking to somebody that had that kind of perspective. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I think just the fact that you would ask them, uh, like, to explain further would kill their argument immediately. Like, I, I don't think anybody, I don't think you can have a good argument. Like, what, what makes Smash not a fighting game? I think it's just, I wish, I wish we had some, some asshole on the panel today that, uh, that kind of uh, had that perspective. Yeah. Just because I'd like to know. Maybe, I'd, I'd just love to know, like, what makes that a fighting game? It would definitely be interesting to, to find out. And I mean, so many, it's so crazy to me because so many, um, uh, how, how do I want to say this? Give me just a second. Oh, I, oh, that edit button's ready. Take your time, brother. Yeah. Take your time. Uh, when you peel everything back, there are so many damn similarities between the two. Fighting, traditional fighting games and, and melee. There's mm-hmm. so many parallels between them. And it's so fun to see because now I get to like, you know, I have my phone set up to where it loads up like, uh, or it gives me a ping every time a third strike video comes out, mm. right? And I'll like watch it and I get to keep up and understand what's going on. And it's just like, it's so much fun. And it's so much fun going to the arcades and people are like, damn, who's your friend? Like, he's kind of okay. And he's got like a good idea of like, you know, mixing stuff up and not being a complete idiot. So just like... <laughs> 
I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, this is my buddy who plays. Uh, there, I'll never forget. I went to a, a a tournament. I think it was called Aftershock, and they had a third strike cabinet. And I was playing Makoto at that time still. And I played on that cabinet for like it must have been fifteen or twenty minutes beating people. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Damn, you're really good! Like, are you uh, are you here for the third strike tournament?" I'm like, nope, I'm here for melee. And just, <laughs> <you're annoying." laughs> and just flipped the machine over and just fucking left. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think anybody there was you know like I don't think I played anybody that was actually relevant. Mm. So I think I just played. You know, the bottom. Mark was like, no, I'm here for the fighting game. Hey, 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 that's good enough, man. And that's another fun thing about fighting games is that, you know, you can just run into a room sometimes and it just be that, you know, like there's just a bunch of people in a room and you get to fuck everyone up. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm about to be in on this. Who, I don't even care if I get my ass whooped. <laughs> who, who do you play now? You said you were playing Makoto back then. Who do you play now? Man, you, Frankie, <laughs> you <laughs> fucked me up, my guy. Why? What did I do? <laughs> so, I, I, the reason, one of the things I love about Melee is learning more about the, the intricacies of each character. Mm. And with the breakdown videos that you've done, I like so many different characters and can appreciate so many different characters in the game and the cast. And I've broken it down to just a few characters that I think I'd like to play, but I am there. It's not Makoto anymore because I love how she plays and she's so cool to me, but I just don't click with that character anymore. Mm. It's either, it's one of these three. So it's either Ken or, um, so it's Ken, Yun or Dudley. Mm. Mm. One of those three. And I'm not sure. And I'm I'm leaning towards Yun because, uh, okay, I I said this to one of my students, and they said, please never repeat that. That is the cringiest thing I've ever heard. So I'm gonna repeat it here. <laughs> and that, um, if I got good at third strike, I'd want to be known as the spatula because I just want to get in there and mix shit up. <laughs> <laughs> the spatula. Oh, uh, I guess we found the episode title like <laughs> just like that. <laughs> the spatula oh that's so God. fucking funny. <laughs> that's so, so art. What up? one thing for and I love about commentary is like finding these little things about a person. The day you are on stream playing Third Strike, the spatula puns. I can't wait. It's, like, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to start working on them from right now. I'm going to start working on them. Have them on deck. <laughs> you know, that, that short order cook bell. <laughs> <laughs> Call this man the chef, the baker. <laughs> the baker. Oh, man. Dude, I think honestly, I think I think the best mix of character might be Dudley because it's just so cheap. Well, he's just so cheap, man. That Rose gives him powers. And it's a hard knockdown, and it's like a true fifty-fifty. Yeah. It's like, I think, oh, ha- have yeah. fun, have fun. Either way, have fun, man. And dude, Fight K Two has been really, or Fight K Neo, whatever it's called, it's been yeah. a, a godsend for people. There's a bunch oh, of players yeah. in Texas, man. Yeah, they have a strong scene, man. Texas is one of the best scenes fucking strong I'll, I'll i'll link you to a couple people um yeah, after this sure. i'll put it in discord but yeah texas is i think texas might be the best place to learn third strike right now honestly Damn. the new york scene's a fucking mess we're, we're we're crazy we're like we're overran by weirdos um the like the cali like the cali scene is great but they're inconsistent you know like yeah. the like their top players don't always come out i think texas is like I think it's the best place to learn third strike. So if you're if you're even at all encouraged by it, it's like, please, I'll I'll, I'll link you to everything that I think could help you. You know, sure. maybe even go out and and enjoy it. But, um, yeah. real quick, what is your relationship with with all of the other smashes that's come out after after so, melee? I played brawl briefly and competed for it. I did pretty well. Um, at least the very start, and then I got kind of not really interested in it as much. And then I played four for a little bit too, and four was a lot of fun for me. But I kind of just fell off and went back to melee, and mm. like I hunkered down to get better at, at melee. So 
because that's the time that I was fighting to keep the top 100 status. Mm. So it's like, uh, yeah. So or at least to try. Or I'm getting my years mixed up. I've been playing since I've been playing competitively since 2005. So wow. my years get a little mixed up. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's either I was trying to get back on it or I was trying to keep it. I think so. It was one of those two. Nice at that time. What about Ultimate? Did you what ever? What brings you? Oh, Ultimate, yeah. Oh, um, Ultimate, I play with like friends. Oh, like that was that. The, 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 you treat I, that I like one like a lot. party game. But yeah, well, I'll play it with friends and I'll talk a lot of shit. But, <laughs> man, yeah. So melee is the gold standard. I just love the game so much. It's always been like a rock kind of for me it's always been something to go back to and something mm. to you know play when i'm feeling kind of down or anything like that and i've gotten to the point where i play subconsciously now like for the most part and i can actively work on stuff like while i play mm. and it's just, it's really fun yeah that's it's just, just really fun being able to do that what what it because um you know it seems like you've tried to you know tap dance you know with these newer games right but there's just always something that gets you back to melee like what is it about the newer games design that just doesn't keep you there so hmm, they keep limiting the movement options and that's really unfortunate mm. but i like four four was fun because it felt like a mix between street fighter and a mix between traditional smash and i know a lot of people are going to disagree with me and not like me for that <laughs> but not like the comment i guess i should say yeah not, not like me, but not like the comment but I really enjoyed four. MK Leo is a was like the mm. best in the world at one point, and he is just he is a boss. And he actually um, analyzing him in Smash Four gave me ideas for melee, and that's why I mm. like looking at a bunch of different games because, like how I talked about, when you peel the game back, you start understanding that there's like so many different similarities between between like each game, and you can learn a lot of stuff from it. So, mm. yeah, that's so interesting. Uh, because like it's it's you know i guess i i have a weird built like built-in excuse because street fighter tends to not you know serialize their you know the the, the mechanics of a game so every mm -hmm. game is pretty different from the other but right. you know with smash you know there is that that every it's like a gloss you know that everything kind of looks the same like it should be the same game but why do you think that developers go are going in that direction of limiting like the movement options, for instance? Like, why do you think that that's why? The, you know, I, I don't. Uh, Sakurai doesn't like us, so. <laughs> thing. Well, uh, Nintendo doesn't like or hasn't really been very respect. Uh, no, no, eh, I don't know. Nintendo's. I don't know. They've we butted heads. <laughs> We've had differences. <laughs> let's say it that way. It's so. it's the ult it's the ultimate irony, right? It's like it's it's this. Um, damn, I just read it like not too long ago, but it was it's it's basically like this. Uh, it's like a Buddhist like idea that um, that what like whenever you you know put like effort into something, like the like the negative thing happens, right? So it's like in in this case, it's like Capcom is so invested. And making Street Fighter like this competitive thing, and right. and making people like get into it that way, and and make it this the this force of competition, and it just fails like on every level. And then yeah. and then on the on the Nintendo side, they're trying so hard to make it casual, and then it just fails on that end because the other thing just ha it's like the negative thing always happens. It's like you <laughs> like you can't hold on to something too tight because you're gonna lose it. It's yeah. like maybe maybe Capcom just needs to go that way. Maybe they just need to like f like forget about it, and maybe it might benefit us. <laughs> Third Strike Two. Oh my no. god, dude! Oh. I have I have this weird like like fantasy kind of slash theory about like where Street Fighter Six is going because they've yeah. been gradually like putting parries into. <laughs> all of these games and like their own little ways right like they started with the focus system in street fighter 4 and then, you know they started flirting with that and it was like all right let's take this to the next level and then they gave us red focus which is basically a parry right like it's just you keep going you keep going you keep going and then in street fighter 5 they gave ryu his cute little like parry v skill and it was broke it's not that broken but you know it was it was pretty cute 
you know? And then he nerfed it a little bit, and then they gave Gil one, right? So I just think that we're trending, hopefully we're trending toward this place where Street Fighter Six has a parry, and then I can hate it, but I could be good at it, you know, so it's okay. <laughs> like that's that <laughs> that's, I respect that. You know? I think I that. <laughs> that's that's my fantasy for where Street Fighter Six is going, but who the fuck knows that?